If you go to China nowadays, you may see a certain seven foot six athlete endorsing milk teas and banks on banners posted to bus stops and on the sides of grocery stores. Yao Ming is perhaps the biggest reason why the NBA is the most watched sport in China. And although the NBA Hall of Famer's career was cut short by injuries, he remains a national hero in his home country. Every other major sport would love to find their own Yao Ming and break into colossal markets like China or India, which is why Zhang Ming Yang has unique opportunity in the UFC. Like an NBA basketballer standing over seven foot tall, heavyweights and light heavyweights like him have a larger than life, incredible Hulk kind of quality to them that often gives them an edge in popularity over combatants from smaller weight classes. While I'm not ready to say Zhang Ming Yang is the Yao Ming of the UFC just yet, he does have a rich future ahead of him should he continue to find success in the octagon. So in this video, I'm asking who is Zhang Ming Yang and how could he do in the UFC? Born in Fuyang in China's Anhui province on August 16th, 1998, today Zhang Mingyang is 25 years old. He's fought in a lot of the regional Chinese promotions like WLF, Huya FC, Kunlun, Yunfeng Showdown, and CKF with a few appearances in Russia. He's fought at heavyweight for his whole career up to his road to UFC fight where he dropped down to light heavyweight. His fight statistics are really impressive even if they do show that he's long outgrown fighting at heavyweight on the Chinese regional scene. Zhang's record is 16 and 6, and he's only been to a decision once. Not only that, but he's finished all 16 of his wins in the first round, and his win streak is currently at 9 straight. Now, if there is a knock on his record, it's that the upper weight classes in China haven't historically had a lot of highly skilled MMA fighters, and you can tell in his last couple fights that he's graduated from that tier of competition a long time ago, and has been knocking everyone out with ease. As far as Zhang's team, his home home base is at Sunkin Fight. That team was originally based in Qingdao, Shandong, China, but a good portion of that team moved to Pattaya, Thailand last year to set up shop. Before the Tokos fight at Road to UFC, he made his first work trip to the States and trained at Jackson Wink in New Mexico before heading to Tiger Muay Thai in Thailand to finish the camp. His entrance into the UFC couldn't have gone better. He got a non-tournament fight to kick off the first ever Road to UFC season, fighting highly touted UK prospects Prospect George Tokos. Tokos was the biggest favorite of the night, but his aggression against Zhang would be his undoing as Zhang knocked him out with a right hook in the first round. UFC offered him a contract that same day after his fight went so well, and eventually his debut would be scheduled for UFC 284 in February of 2023. Zhang had to pull out of that fight when a long-standing injury flared up, and his debut would be rescheduled for the planned Shanghai event that following December, with his opponent being Contender Series winner Brinson Hibiero. Unfortunately, that event would be scrapped altogether for some behind-the-scenes red tape kind of stuff, and the fighters couldn't get rescheduled to move the fight to Las Vegas in time. Now he has his debut set for the third time against Hibiero at UFC 298. Of all the UFC fighters waiting to make their debut, he's been waiting the longest, over a year and a half since his signing. For this fight against Hibiero, he's trained at Extreme Couture in Las Vegas since the end of December, while also dropping in at Sunken Fight and the UFC PI in Shanghai over the last year. Now let me give you what I can from watching the tape on Zhang. I watched several of his most recent fights, including the George Tokos fight. Fighting on the regional scene, it's really hard to get a scale on Zhang's skill when the level of his opponents is lower and the fights don't last very long. But a few notes. Against Zhang Tsai Bao in 2021, I saw him pull off a pretty decent takedown where he shot for a single leg, transitioned to a double leg, and then turned the corner for a finish. From there, he easily passed to half guard and full mount, where he notched a relatively easy ground and pound finish. Fighting Huo Changcheng in April of 2021, again, this was a short fight. You do start to see a common habit of Zhang responding well to opponents pressuring forward with his own counters. And remember that for the Tokos fight coming up. When he got this fight to the mat, his ground and pound was massive and it only took a few punches to knock Huo unconscious. Despite that, I find it really hard to get a good look at Zhang's grappling since the sequences are usually Zhang knocking down or taking his 
opponent down and immediately pounding them out. The George Tokos fight for Road to UFC was a lot of fun. It didn't seem like Tokos had a lot of respect for Zhang's game because he instantly came out super aggressive and got unnecessarily more wild in the fight. Zhang Mingyong reacts pretty well to over aggressive opponents. He typically stands his ground and effectively countered Tokos every time he moved in close. Going forward, I would like to see Zhang keep things a little tighter as he got touched up by the jab of Tokos and kept his guard a little wide. But in this fight, you got to see the raw athleticism of Zhang and his love for brawls. As the round went on and Tokos was wearing a lot of damage, he was putting together his combinations well and started digging to the body before going up top. He worked to bring down the guard of Tokos with those chopping calf kicks and body punches and then knocked him out with a leading right hook. So. What's in store for his UFC debut? He's fighting contender series winner Brinson Hibeto of Brazil, who beat massive favorite Bruno Lopez with a straight right hand and hammer fists in the first round. Hibeto is wild on the feet, and if this fight becomes a brawl, then I think this definitely favors Zhang. Zhang has a decent chin and hits a lot harder than Hibeto. Hibeto does have a six inch reach advantage and uses it to throw long straight punches that can border on being a little bit sloppy, but I expect this fight will probably continue Zhang's streak of first First round finishes. A good chance you'll see Zhang eat some of Hibeto's jabs as the fight starts, but he should be able to weather those and find his own range rather quickly. Zhang has a massive speed advantage over Hibeto, so I expect him to counter to Hibeto's looping punches before too long. You could also see Zhang attempt to drag Hibeto to the ground if he eats too many jabs, and from there I think he would try to finish the fight by ground and pound. Either way, I think Zhang wins this by first round KO or TKO, and it seems like a fight that's honestly kind of tailor-made for him. I'll be honest, it's kind of hard to know how Zhang Mingyong is going to do in the UFC. There's honestly just so much that we don't know about his skills and things like his cardio, his grappling, how he's going to hold up over the distance against high quality opponents. But honestly, that's what makes this so fun, right? We have no idea. We know the guy's a banger. We know he can finish fights. But other than that, the sky's the limit for Zhang Mingyong. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel and check out some of these other videos I think are pretty cool.